The views and opinions expressed by the guests of the Inspira podcast do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of any agency of the United States government or any organization, public or private. Welcome to the Inspira podcast, hosted by your girl, me, Erica Mueller Chen. I'm an international development specialist with over a decade of experience leveraging the amazing power of sport to promote peace and positive social impact. My career has allowed me to live in Europe, Southern Africa, and Latin America. In 2022, I accepted an offer for my dream job in sports diplomacy. And I also became an employee family member to a U.S. diplomat, a.k.a. an EFM. This podcast is all about inspiration and career advice. Each episode, I'll interview an inspirational global changemaker working in sport for development, social impact, or the diplomatic service. This series is perfect if you have interest in breaking into one of these sectors or you've already landed that dream role and are keen to learn from thought leaders. Enjoy today's episode and stay inspired. Finding my voice is something very powerful because I feel it has always awakened the sense that others can also act on. It makes you know who you you really are because your voice is what really speaks up for you and your voice, if it's heard, you'll see the changes through the voice that you, you brought out. Welcome, friends. Today's special guest is Pauline Msungu. Pauline is a football player in the Kenyan Women's Premier League and a youth ambassador for the Bundesliga Youth Ambassadors Project in Kenya. Pauline's passionate about football and gender equity and believes that sport is a powerful tool that creates positive social impact. She was selected by the International Olympic Committee to be an IOC Young Leader, where she's created the social enterprise called Beyond Sport Kenya. Welcome, Pauline. How are you doing today and where are you calling us from? Thank you so much, Erika. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today with you to discuss much more about my project and also about sports for development as a, a development for sports in the community today. Uh, my name is Pauline Msungu. I'm an IOC young leader representing Kenya, and I'm calling from Kenya in a city called, uh, in a town called Kitale. It's in the Rift Valley part of Kenya. Wonderful. Well, I'm so thrilled to be speaking with you today, Pauline. And one thing I like to do before we jump into the podcast interview is mention why my guest inspires me. And so Pauline, from what I understand about you and your sports journey, you've really identified some challenges in your communities and you're now working to solve those. And so, for example, what we'll be speaking about more today is Beyond Sport Kenya, which I understand is a youth led project in Western Kenya that works toward advocating for and promoting gender equality in sports and through football coaching and mentorship, as well as community led development. Your project aims to develop a more inclusive community where people are treated equally, regardless of their social status status, age, gender, and or sexual orientation. So such important work and it really inspires me and I'm excited to learn more about some of your own inspiration today. Thank you so much, uh, Erika. I'm so glad that you understand what actually I'm doing and you've taken your time to read me to at least understand what actually I do and what inspires you from my side. Thank you so much. Yes, it's my pleasure, and I'm sure many people will be excited to learn more from you today, Pauline. Perhaps as a starting question, I can invite you to share more with the audience about your personal sports journey and perhaps what it was like being a competitive female football player in Kenya. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if you can share my uh my sports journey with the audience. Uh, first, I'll say I started playing football. I love playing football. 
and I started playing football uh, way back when I was still young. I was in my primary study level. I was a very little girl, uh, but now I was playing with uh, boys because I could not get the opportunity to play with girls. And uh, by then, there were, there were no many girls who play football. There are no many girls who engage themselves in sports because in African communities, people believe that sports is only f uh, for male but not for girls. They, uh, they tend to believe that girls' space is in the kitchen. So that's why you could find that I, I was at least, as, let me say, I used to sneak out from home to go play with boys because my parents could not even give me the chance to go to, go to play, to, the, uh, to go and showcase, wo showcase what I have and showcase my talent. One thing they could only tell you, it's you to remain at home, but your brothers will go out and play, they'll go out and do their things. But for me, I used to sneak out. So that's where I started playing football, and that's where I, I felt I'm developing the interest of playing football, and I started giving it more much attention. And I felt like it's giving me at least a, a platform where I can do something. After joining, like, in primary school, I started playing with... Uh, my my schoolmates, my classmates, and that's when I started representing my school in competitions, in primary school level competitions. Then after that, I was lucky to be scouted by a coach who took me to a secondary school that was given scholarship to continue studying and also playing football. That's when at least I felt like, uh, so someone is trying to nurture my talent and someone has already seen me play so I have this thing in me and it's it's in me, I can do it better. And because I can get the trainings, I can get the equipments to play, I can get the space, so I, I'll go and give it my best. And at my secondary school level, that's when I now started playing very competitive, being competitive, like, hey, so I can get my position, I can play in this position better than how I was playing in primary. And being trained at least gave me an, a platform to uh, to notice that so I can be a good football player and I can do something in life with this football thing. I earned a scholarship to continue playing and also representing my university. I was the, the, the university captain, soccer captain, representing the women team. And also I was able to motivate my team and also lead my team all through to the uh, national level, to the East African level throughout the four years. You see, this is like a journey that has always been in me since the primary level. Just immediately when I found like a coach who could train me and give me a, the support, give me a, a chance and platform to play, an opportunity to, for, to showcase what you have is what, what motivated me mostly to continue playing and work more hard to play because... Uh, Earlier before, I could not access the, the opportunity and the chance to continue playing. So I feel it's been a, a long journey for me. And again, it hasn't been smooth because playing football as a, women, as a woman in Kenya, it's not an easy task because there is a lot of discrimination. There is a lot of things that will face, a lot of challenges. But if it's only for you to be strong enough and believe in yourself, to conquer those challenges and uh, pursue what you really want to pursue at the end of it. Yeah. Thank you, Pauline. Thanks so much for sharing more about your sports journey, especially as an athlete and a female athlete in Kenya and those doors that you were able to open by getting noticed and receiving scholarships, but acknowledging that that's not always possible for a lot of girls or women in your community or in your country. Uh, so it sounds like that was maybe giving you some of the building blocks of identifying this concept of sport for development or the potential impact of sport because you've identified these topics of access to sport, the topic of gender equity, the topic of mentorship. And so I'm wondering, Pauline, how and when you discovered that sport can be used intentionally to promote personal development or social change. And I believe you had a really transformative experience traveling to Brazil that might be part of that story. Yeah, sure. Thank you. 
uh, for reminding me about the journey to Brazil. It's been part of my journey in sports as well. And I can say uh, sports for development has been a journey in me because uh, starting playing it at a very low level, I had no one to at least lead me through. But um, I had a one chance to uh, to join a sports for development organization uh, which was around my community but somehow far away but i at least had an opportunity to get the chance to play within that organization but um, the distance as well will not favor me because home was far from where the uh, playing ground was or where the organization was so uh, after joining that organization, I was able to be molded through the sports for development journey. And you will find that most of the time we could play, but at the same time we could be learning. And uh, the organization could organize for different workshops, mentorship sessions for the girls. They, they could bring more girls on board, um, at least to try to curb the, the, the different challenges in the community, like early pregnancies for the girls early marriages for the girls in the community, something that was so at a higher rate. And the organization was trying to curb uh, that challenge in the community by providing the, uh, giving the opportunity to the girls to play and also creating a, a safe space for them to discuss issues affecting them from home. And that's where uh, I started learning, like, so it's not only playing football, but it's also playing and learning and uh, developing some different uh, life skills, life skill education in, in us that will at least help us in life uh, apart from just playing. And in the same organization, I got an opportunity being so much, being talented, I can say, with uh, some few girls, let me say, how many were we like? Three girls, three boys, we had an opportunity to attend to um, a festival in Brazil at the same uh, same time. That was 2014 during the World Cup to attend the, to Football for Hope Festival in Brazil that was played in Rio de Janeiro. And we were part of it, part of the comp competition. But the competition that we went for, it wasn't just football for competition. It was football for uh, fair play. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. They were trying to look at the fair play part of it, not really the competition part of it, because the competition part of it was in the World Cup at the same time. But for us now, we are trying to develop the fair play part of it. And you'll find that um, we played all our matches. Uh, we were playing a uh, street football, uh, the, the football three tournament, which is played with... Uh, three boys, three girls, but on the pitch, we should have uh, two girls must be on the pitch, just promote gender equality and fairness. And also maybe two boys, three boys, I mean, so five players on the pitch, but one substitute. So you'll find out that um, we played all our matches, we won all the matches, we got all the points, but at the end of the day, we lost it. We lost at the semifinals because we missed one fair play point. And that was, that was the end of us because uh, we could not de really demonstrate what, uh, what had made us go there. We were only focusing, like we were young and we were only focusing on, let's score them many goals, let's do this. So if you miss the fair play point, then you are cut short. And that's what uh, made us to lose the match, the finals. So we did not play the finals at the end. And it was a, a learning lesson for us because at the end of the day, it was sports for development, not for competition. And that's where, uh, that's where I learned like sports for development, it's, a, it's very key and it's uh, uh, something important for it's It's a social change. It's a tool for social change in the community because for us to learn fair play, it, was, it took us like, you should understand what you really came to do, but... Uh, you did not only come to play football and win and go back home, but at the end of the day, what have you made these other people learn from you? What have you learned from these other people? And what, how, have, how has it developed you as a person? Yeah. 
Mm. And Pauline, do you remember how your team could have been awarded fair play points? Do you have any examples of how to earn a fair play point? Because it sounds like it's very different than scoring a goal. Yeah, sure. I can really remember the game. I do. I also played with uh, my young girls in the in my in my project. So uh, when you comes, it comes to awarding the points. This is where we have to. We have. Uh, three three parts in that game. We have a uh, pre match pre match discussion. We have the match itself. We ha- then we have the uh, post match post match discussion. Uh, so in pre match discussion, this is where you go uh, discuss, make the rules. Uh, the rules are the referees that will abide by while playing. Then um, during the playing. You have to follow all the three the, the three rules that you set as a team, both the opponents and you as a team. You set the three point the, the three rules, then you have to follow. Then after the match, you go for post-match discussion. This is where you award the points. You start by the first rule. Did this team follow the rule? If they did not follow the rule, then that point is gone. If they followed the rule, then that point is awarded. And that's how we would not follow some of the rules and we lost the, the point for, for the other team. This episode features an IOC young leader. For those wondering, what does that mean? The International Olympic Committee, a.k.a. the IOC, launched the IOC Young Leaders Program in 2016 in order to empower talents to leverage the power of sport to make a positive difference in their communities. 25 leaders from across the world are selected every two years for a four-year period. As of April 2023, when I'm releasing this episode, the IOC website states that with the support of seed funding from the IOC and a network of mentors, these inspiring young people have already delivered over 140 initiatives, reaching over 30,000 individual participants. As agents of Olympism, they promote the Olympic values and principles of Olympism 365 days a year, spreading the message of sport for good. Panasonic is the founding partner of the IOC Young Leaders Program, and Eunice Sports Hub is an implementing partner. Now let's get back to the episode. Thank you for sharing that. And I believe at the time when you were in Brazil in 2014, I believe that was implemented by Street Football World, a sport for development organization that's now branded as Common Goal, which was an amazing opportunity for you. And it sounds like that's really impacted you on your journey. Yeah, sure. It was implemented by Street Football World. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about your IOC Young Leaders experience so far. Congratulations on being selected as an IOC Young Leader. Pauline, I'd love to invite you to speak a little bit more about your initiative, Beyond Sport Kenya. Perhaps what was the motivation for creating this program and how your experience has been so far with the implementation? Thank you for congratulating me for being selected as an IOC Young Leader. Beyond Sport Kenya, uh, I'll say it works towards advocating for and promoting gender equality in and through sports. And we work with young youths from the age of 12 to 19 years, girls and boys, both girls and boys. Being a sports person and having grown up in a, an, envir- an environment that I feel girls are denied the access and opportunity to uh, participate in sporting activities, it's what really motivated me to start this project. And I named it Beyond Sport Kenya because I felt uh, for us to really focus and bring these girls on board, we're working on uh, the problem gender inequality in and through sports, but not only in sports. Uh, that's where I felt like I should do something beyond sports. And uh, we do like mentorship for the, for the girls who are not interested in playing football because not everyone can come to play football. So we engage them in our programs. So at least they can learn something, one or two, 
to at least empower them and also raise their voice in the community as girls. We have um, life skill education, we have mentorship session, we have football development, talent development, uh, football coaching. We combine all of them and at the end of the day, we want to see more girls participate in sports and like how it was earlier during our time. Such important work, Pauline. You mentioned the problems that you're aiming to solve really center on gender inequality in and through sport and the idea that sport can do more. And so going beyond the sports, so I love that name, Beyond Sport Kenya. And Pauline, I, I have a follow-up question about how your experience has been so far because in hearing your reflections about your own sport journey with the challenges that you faced i'm wondering if you faced any challenges with your program and specifically i'm curious about how your experience has been to communicate this program to the community and perhaps if you felt supported and just how the idea has been received and I invite you to speak more generally about perhaps any challenges that you've encountered. Yeah, sure. Challenges are always there. Uh, even if you are heading somewhere that you feel everything is positive, but you will always uh, face a challenge. And uh, I can say one of the challenges, um, there is uh, much expectations from the community because uh, from um, in the community that we live today, I can say from Kenya, uh, most parents, for those who will release their children to come to the pitch, they'll always expect something back at home because they feel like, uh, uh, you know, the economy, the, the living standards are so high. And so the parents will be like, are you just going there to waste your time? No one is going to pay you. But at the end of the day, they don't understand or they don't understand that, that uh, you are also trying to help this person to find out that they can do something else apart from just uh, working directly to be paid. But gain, gaining the knowledge and getting something in a different way is also a growth process for them. Another challenge uh, in the initiative is there are few girls who turn up for the program. It, and this is because... Just the way I said earlier, our community, the, the stereotypes in the community, they believe that football is only a male sport. So most girls are not allowed to play football. The only thing they can be supported to do is getting married, uh, working in the kitchen. Like their space is just in the kitchen, not but not in uh, any space to do anything to do with sports. It's for men. And that's something that I'm trying to work on so much at least to change the mindset and perception of the community that uh, this sport can help your child. Sometimes I do uh, community forums at least to sensitize and create the awareness to them that uh, we all, we as a community, we are championing for gender equality in our community. And we are doing this through, our sport, through sports. And, and, and through sports, it will help our girls at least to minimize a lot of... Uh, teenage issues, teenage discussions that might mislead them. Because you'll find that most girls, if they're not engaged in sports in my community, it's this is an evidence that there will always uh, different things of abuses in the community that will not add value to their life. Some of the parents are very positive. The community leaders are very positive and supportive, and they do uh, acknowledge the program. They do support the program, and most of them have seen the changes. They are supporting the girls to come to the field. At least the number of girls is now increasing slowly. Well, Pauline, what you just mentioned actually makes me think of two other people that I've interviewed for this podcast and just for your awareness and the audience as well. Um, Oscar Moenga from Zambia and Suheel Tandon from India. And even though those are two very different countries than Kenya, those two individuals and leaders in sport for development spoke to me about the challenges they faced with changing perceptions around females in sport and the cultural norms that they interacted with where there was this expectation and pressure on girls and women to get married or uh, 
to your point as well, this hierarchy of needs, this um, desire that a family understandably would have where individuals need to make money and you need to think about what benefit is this going to bring to a young person or to a family. And so just that challenge and that opportunity of changing perceptions, changing the view of how sport can be used and the value that sport brings, especially to girls and women. So I really appreciate what you just shared there about your personal and organizational challenges and just that huge, huge topic. And Pauline, I'm now wondering, what do you think will be the key to your success or to Beyond Sport Kenya programming being successful? First, the cooperation from the community is very key because this program is in the community and we are the community. Ensure that you include the community in each and every step of your project implementation for their understanding at least and to uh, curb their high expectations from the program. And another thing is the opportunity, the opportunities that we create for the, uh, our beneficiaries is our success. Uh, if we see our beneficiaries succeed, then that's the success of the, uh, the organization as a whole. The motivation to the, the beneficiaries as well is the success of the community. We see our beneficiaries in a very right, uh, space and a very right position at least to they're empowered and they can also feel like oh i grew up through beyond sport kenya and this is something that have uh, brought me up and this is something that has made me who i am today what is one thing that you've learned throughout this process so far that might be helpful for others in terms of setting up your own sport for development initiative one thing that I've learned is just tracking every step of your project implementation. And this will always give you your direction of where you are heading and uh, where you are coming from. Because it will be easy for you to understand the challenges that you faced and it will be easy for you to ensure that uh, you correct on the mistakes that you made while implementing your project. One quick follow-up question. I was curious about your program so far. When did you launch Beyond Sport Kenya? And how long do you hope to be implementing programming? I launched Beyond Sport Kenya in November 12, 2022. And it was a success, I can say, because uh, for the people I invited on board, they were positive, the community was positive, the leaders in the community were positive and they were very supportive of the program. And I can say I intend to continue with Beyond Sport Kenya because Beyond Sport, Beyond Sport Kenya is a long-term thing and it's not something that is going to end today or tomorrow because we look forward to um, running it as a community-based organization at the moment because it's still young. Then at a, a later stage, uh, if we get enough resources, will continue expanding it to uh, a larger level so it can also serve people from different uh, different parts of Kenya. Yeah, not just the community that we're coming from. Mm, I couldn't agree more. You can't solve these huge structural and cultural and access challenges overnight. So I'm really excited that you're hoping to implement this programming long term. And I'm hoping that you receive all the support from the community, local and international. How has the IOC Young Leaders Program impacted your understanding of the potential power of sport? The IOC Young Leaders Program has really impacted me, my program and understanding of the, uh, the power of sport. I can say through the expert session that we've always been having at uh, during every month, it's it gives me a more understanding in the manner that I'll be able to understand that life is always connecting with sports. If you sit down and think uh, through every step that you make, you'll, you'll get that you're having a sport in you. While you're working, it's a sport. While you're doing something, it's a sport. You are th if you think, it's a sport because it involves change of, uh, it's like a ball. It's changing from one direction. It's changing from this team to their opponent's team. So every step in life involves, uh, it connects with sports. And it's very healthy for you to connect with sports for a living as well. I like that. Life is like a ball. It's changing directions. That's very relatable. Yeah. So I love that, Pauline. Okay. 
Pauline, in your journey, how important do you think finding your voice has been? Finding my voice is something very powerful because I feel it has always awakened the sense and the lead that others that others can also act on. Uh, it makes it makes you know who you you really are because your voice is what really speaks up for you and your voice if it's heard then everything will you'll see the changes in uh through the voice that you you brought out well i know you're still relatively early in your career in your sports career in your sport for development career but i would love to ask you pauline in 10 years what do you hope to be doing and in 10 years what changes or differences do you hope have been made in communities in Kenya? Women's Sport Kenya is, is my heart. I can say it's my heart. It's my initiative that uh, uh, I decided to bring up through the experiences that I've gone through in uh, my, my life, my sporting life as well. And 10 years, five years from now, I can say I want to see Beyond Sport Kenya at a very high level uh, where it can serve more than the community. It can serve more than at least different communities and different people from different backgrounds to enjoy the fruits of uh, Beyond Sport Kenya. So we want to serve all the Kenyans through our initiative that will have already grown uh, maybe in five or 10 years from now. God willing, everything will be very positive. And I want to see, I, I will have built different leaders, young leaders uh, in this coming generation to be leading the Beyond Sport Kenya to, to transpire what I had and uh, leave it to them to continue developing in uh, different sectors and different departments of Beyond Sport Kenya. Now that we know more about our guest's career journey, the rest of our conversation will allow us to have some fun and get to know our guest on a personal level through some rapid fire questions. We'll then start to wrap up with pointed questions focused on advice and how our listeners can transform interest into action. Enjoy the rest of the conversation. What is your favorite food? Oh, okay. I love food. I love food. <laughs> so I can say, uh, if you say you love food, then you have to say more than two. But if you don't love food, then you have to say one. So I can say I love uh, eating, eating chicken. It has high protein content and it has low fats. As a, an athlete, you know what I mean with proteins and fats, so we balance uh, in different sectors. I love eating fried rice. I love eating vegetables. Yeah, those are the things I love eating. Mm. Do you have a favorite sports memory? My favorite sports memory is when I, I represented my country in a squad that I was the, young, the youngest in that squad. And I could feel that I'm being empowered as a young person. I could see my other, other players coming to me and telling me, like motivating me, you know, you are going to play, so just be, just be courageous, just believe in yourself, just be strong, go and do it. You can do it, you believe in you. And all those words were like hey, motivating me and I was like, hey, so I can do this thing, so I can just represent my country and uh, putting on a jersey for your country, it's not an easy task at that early age. And I felt so much honored and... Quick follow-up question, Pauline. Are you still competing uh, at a very high level in football? Yeah, sure. Actually, I'm still competing. I play for, uh, I play in Kenyan Women Premier League. I play for Tika Queens. Uh, currently, we see that uh, position three on the table, but I can see we are in position two because we still tie the points in position two, and we are aiming at um, uh, getting the title for this uh, for this season because we're really working hard for it, 
and no one will wish to let it go at like for me at my age i will wish to get the title before i will maybe hang my boots i haven't said i'm hanging it yet because you know being a sports person you will not you will we'll always want to play forever but mm -hmm. uh, when the body says it's a no <laughs> then it will be a no but mm -hmm. for now i'm still playing competitive football but at the same time i'm putting my energy beyond sport kenya to see it grow mm -hmm. do you have a favorite athlete uh, she's called mata mata is a female player from brazil she plays for the national team uh, i like this girl because uh, whenever i look at what she really does she's someone who believes in herself and she's someone who has Sometimes I read, uh, I follow her, I read her stories and I feel like she went through something related to what I went through while I was still playing football at a, a young age because she went through a lot of discrimination while playing football at her young age, but she managed to conquer the challenges to the, uh, to the point that she's still playing at the moment at her, uh, her age. She's around 37 years right now. And she's still playing very competitive football. She's very strong. And I always look at her and I feel so much motivated because I'm younger than how she is, but she's playing as if she's in her early 20s. <laughs> so that's a very positive thing to be an athlete with mm. such a positive energy. Mm, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Well, Pauline, do you have any other hobbies or interests outside of sport and outside of food? Uh, just because I love food, so you're telling me to go outside the food and food. It's a tough question. I'm not sure if anybody has an answer. Uh, okay, okay, no problem. Anyway, um, outside sports, I like interacting with nature. I like uh, being in a cool environment, maybe looking at water flowing, maybe just seeing the trees, listening to uh, birds' voices and reflecting back because I always relate and try to, um, when I look at a tree, maybe a tree, a tree that I've grown and there are these trees that meanders around the tree, I feel those trees are supporting these uh, plants that meanders along it. And I always relate it and reflect with life, the real life situation and how I want to support Kenya to be. And uh, I feel like I'm the pillar for these people growing through Beyond Sport Kenya. And if I relate it with the trees, the nature that I interact with, I feel exactly what is what it is. And it gives me positive energy to continue doing it because if a tree can hold on to another plant, why not me? That's beautiful. For any listeners out there who might be interested in becoming an IOC young leader in the next few years, what advice might you give to them? I can only tell them that if uh, they, feel, they really feel they're interested in, in being part of the IOC Young Leaders Program or being the next cohort, they should just be committed they just need to be committed, dedicated, and have the passion to do what they really want to do because no one else will give you, want, give you what you want and you'll never get what you want if you not, will not work for what you want. So being committed and dedicated and having the passion towards it is what will earn you what you want to, to mm -hmm. get. And that's great advice as well for anyone looking to make a difference in their community using sport to have that commitment, have that energy to put in the work in order to promote something really positive. So thanks for that, Pauline. And what about skills? Do you recommend any particular skills for young people who are interested in entering into the sport for development and peace sector? Uh, okay, I can say the skills on sports for development. Uh, I can say in every space, uh, in this field for sports for development, it's a learning process. So for you to gain the to get the skill or the knowledge, you only have to set your mind ready to learn, and you have to accept that this uh this is a learning process. So the only skill I can give you is be ready to learn. Mm. It's a learning process, and it will never stop. 
and sports for development. That's why it's sports for development. It will continue developing people and it will come, it will change, it will uh, have a different uh, goal for the people. At the end of it, we'll get uh, a new model. Uh, today's model will not be for tomorrow's model because things are changing in a day in, day out. Yeah. So just be ready to learn. How can our audience support you, Pauline, or your work at Beyond Sport Kenya moving forward? Oh, nice question. Uh, this is where I, I also want to uh, invite our audience on board to work with me and to support me in this uh, in this course of Beyond Sport Kenya. I'll call on board the uh, our audience to support in enhancing the vis visibility through social media engagement, talking about the work of Beyond Sport Kenya with partners as part of resource mobilization and also helping by championing for gender equality, both at personal and organizational level, because that's the main goal of the Beyond Sport Kenya uh, as a whole. And also for those audience who feel like they can support us in one way or the other by either donating sports equipment to our community-based organization, we'll always appreciate. Well, my final question, Pauline, that I get excited to ask all of my amazing guests and that you gave me permission to invite you to answer in English and Swahili is who or what inspires you? Oh, nice question. This is where I want to talk about who really inspires me in this life. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I'll speak Swahili and I'll mix with English, both of them. So uh, I'll say who really inspires me first is uh, my parents, but more so you can say uh, my mother. Uh, my mother, mamangu ni mtumwenye amekuwa na nguvu za kutupigania all along. Alafu ni mtumwenye aje kufa moyo because neza sema tukiwa wadogo, babangu alikuwa ni mtu, yendi alikuwa breadwinner wa familia, but alikuja kapata ajali. So, vila alipata ajali, mamangu ndi alikuwa mtu mwenye. Yes, sasa ndi amebaki pale, atushugulikie, alafu unajua tukulukua wengi kwa familia. Kuna wala wako, walikuwa wako primary, kuna wala walikuwa wako high school, kuna wanya wako college, na watu wanataka ku, wanataka at least at the end of the day wachivu kitu, wajue ni wapo neleke kwa maisha yao. So, ungepata mamu ni yetu, ndio atushugulikie, atafte food, atafte kila kitu, dada kwa osi, atafte pesa ya kuenda osi. Mina nusema, ye ni strong, as she's a strong lady, and she's, she inspires me a lot kwa sababu hizo challenges zote aliensua amezikab na at the end of the day, unona, sisi kwenye tuli grow. Hakuna mtu alienda ko, alienda kando na direction yenye mama alikuwa anataka ende. So, utapata kila mtu alienda direction yenye mama alikuwa anataka ende, Ju, at the end of the day, mama alikuwa nataka kutengeneza life ya kila mmoja wetu. Na pia niza sema, apart from mamangu na babangu, kuni inspire, niza tena rudia yule tu mata mcheza jiwa Brazil. Ule msichana anacheza ball, na anacheza ball, yes, amecheza ball for so long, sezi ya kona 37 years, but ukimuangalia utadhani ya kona maybe 21 ama 22 years. Anacheza mpira hadi yani akona energy awezi amini ni mtu ame grow amecheza ball for long but uh, kitu moja mimi ulan kwake ye usema uh, if you don't believe in yourself no one else will believe in you so wo msemo tu kutoka kwake mu feel una encourage kwa sababu ye ujiamini sana na anajua hata kama niko na 37 years nikicheza hii ball Bado neza fanya kitu, niko na hii idea, neza fanya hii kitu. Beyond Sport Kenya hiki grow uh, beyond expectations za maybe watu walikuwa na imagine, hey, Beyond Sport Kenya, ita grow lini, but, but niki kwa na yo believe, self-believe, na una nitaifanya hii grow adi, washanga yekwa ni, hey, ilikuwa tu ni juzi, lakini lewe me grow adi, na touch watu wa different parts of Kenya, so ina make, kila kitu ina go to in line na venye, Yo msemo ya mata ina, inaenda. Yo tu ndo kitumine za sema ina nisipaya sana na watu wawili. Thank you. 
Thank you, Pauline, for your time today. And I'm wishing you all the best with everything you embark on, especially beyond Spark Kenya. Thank you so much. I really appreciate for the time. I really appreciate for the interview. And, and I also want to appreciate our audience. As audience, ensure you listen each and every bit of it because I, I believe each and every bit of it is an inspiration to one person or the other in the community. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Inspira podcast with Erica Mueller Chen. I really hope you enjoyed the episode and found it useful. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and resources. Until next time, stay inspired. If you could, I